Before we get into this video about blade bait fishing, I want to encourage you guys, if you guys are looking to purchase blades, my buddy Dale Wyman is now selling them. Um, and he lost his son at age 35. He left behind a seven-month-old daughter. So what Dale is doing, he's making the exact blades that I'm making, selling them at $4.25 a piece with super high quality components. And he's taking that money and he's putting it into an account for his son's daughter, for his granddaughter. So go over, check those out. Dale makes super high quality blades. Um, they'll go out and catch fish and it goes to a really good cause. So I'll leave all that linked at the very top of the description, at the very top comment. Please go check that out. Help Dale out um, and get yourself some really awesome blades that are going to catch a bunch of big fish. But without further ado, thank you guys for watching and let's dive into this blade bait advanced tips video. What's going on everyone? My name is Benjamin Noak with the Smallmouth Experience and this is my blade bait fishing advanced video. This is going to get really into the details of, of the baits that I'm throwing, the modifications that I do, and the way that I set up my gear that helped me get a couple extra bites over other guys that are fishing a blade bait around me. But if you haven't already checked out my blade bait basics video, I'll have it linked up here in the corner for you guys. Go check that out before you watch this video, especially if you've never thrown a blade bait before. That's going to talk like about what is a blade bait, how do you throw it, what gear am I using, um, where am I fishing this bait, and that's going to give you the basics of what you need to know, and then you can come over and watch this video and kind of learn some of my secrets that I'm doing to be more effective on the water. But if you guys enjoy this video, please do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button, hit subscribe because there's going to be a ton of tips coming all winter long about smallmouth fishing, about things that I do to get a couple extra bites, and some really cool tips that I'm using out there on the water that, that might be new to you guys. So hit that subscribe button and mean a lot to me um, because there's going to be a lot of really cool videos to come. But the first thing I want to talk about is the gear that I'm throwing. And you guys know if you've watched my videos, I throw a blade bait on a spinning rod. I know that's a little bit unconventional. But what I really want to talk about is the leader and the way that I set up my reel that give me a couple advantages over other guys. And we're going to start with the leader. Um, the first thing that I do, most commonly when guys are running leaders, whether it's on a spinning rod or a bait casting rod, they're going to run a short leader, maybe a 6 to 10 foot leader, one or two pulls off of a spool. Um, and the issues that I've had with that is that when the water gets colder, this line gets more brittle. And because of that, when you run a shorter leader, you run the risk of shocking your, your leader and breaking off a lot. And this is something I took from spy bait fishing where you're fishing really light line. Um, they, they call it top shotting, and what I'm doing is I'm running a 30 foot, 30 plus foot leader on top of the braid, so on top of the main line. And the reason for that is you get a couple of the main advantages of fluorocarbon, which you have a little bit of stretch, it doesn't freeze, and it's a heavier, more dense line. So it sinks faster, and it comes off your spool a lot easier. So let's start by talking about the stretch and why that's important when you're fishing a blade bait. Well, a lot of times, like I mentioned, you're fishing around uh, really cold water temperatures. You run the risk of your, your line icing up, your guides icing up. And so your line is actually become, becoming more brittle. If you run a shorter leader and you set the hook on a fish, especially if you set the hook you know, short line or you set it pretty hard, you run the risk of breaking that line off. With a longer leader, when you set the hook, you're going to have more stretch in that fluorocarbon. So you're not going to um, hit it as hard with the braid and run the risk of basically shocking that leader and snapping it. That fluorocarbon is going to have a little bit of stretch to it and it can be the difference between breaking off or landing that fish. So I like to run a really long leader. You're also fishing around, uh, typically fishing around rockier areas. So you're going to get nicks in your line. It's just inevitable that you're going to be fishing around areas where your line is going to become less abrasion resistant. And so by running that longer leader again, you're not going to shock that that weak spot is hard and therefore you probably break off a few less fish. The other main advantage of running that really long leader, as I mentioned, is casting ability. It's a heavier line. So when you put a heavier line on top of your braid, you're going to be able to cast the bait further. You're going to get momentum off the spool. And when that knot is down in your spool, the momentum of that fluorocarbon as it's in the air is going to pull the line through your guides straighter. With the spinning rod, what happens is your, your line by nature is going to come off the reel sideways. So it's not going to come off the reel very clean, especially at the beginning of the cast. That's why you have your first choker guide. Well, when you run that fluorocarbon and you give it an opportunity to start coming off the spool, you're going to have less of um, that line 
spinning around the guide still and it's going to come out straighter. That's me going to mean you're going to be able to make longer casts and that knot is going to have less of an opportunity to get tangled around that front guide. So by getting that heavier line on top of the braid, you're going to get momentum off the spool. That fluorocarbon is going to start to carry off the spool and it's going to come out a lot cleaner for you, especially um, rather than that limp braid. Now let's talk about the way that I set up my reel. And this is something that I figured out uh, pretty early on in the year this season, and that is running a super light drag. If you guys can see that, I'm barely pulling on this line here, but running a light drag, especially when you're fishing treble hooks, is important. Because you are fishing a lighter rod, um, that's going to help with fish pulling off, but by running a really light drag, it's going to allow you to play those fish a lot more. A lot of times you're fishing around open water situations, you're fishing where there's really no cover for these fish to go down in um, and get you tangled up in. So by running a lighter drag, you're going to be able to keep fish pinned a lot more. It's the same concept of fishing a crankbait, right? You want a lighter rod so it can bend more, you can play the fish more. Same thing with the lighter um, drag. You're going to be able to fight the fish a little bit better. You're going to be able to keep fish pinned rather than put so much tension on these hooks especially when they just have one hook in the side of their face. So with the lighter drag, you're going to keep those fish pinned a lot more. So along with that light drag, along with that longer liter of fluorocarbon, um, those are a couple things that I do to help keep fish pinned, reduce break-offs, and help me get a couple more fish to the boat. Now let's talk about the bait itself, some things that I do um, that I think get me a couple extra bites throughout the day. And the first one is running lighter gear. So what I mean by that is running lighter hardware. And this is something that I learned a couple years ago fishing a chatterbait. When you fish a chatterbait on 20 pound test line, it doesn't start as quickly if you fish it on, as if you fish it on 14 or 15 pound. The lighter line you go in front of a bait that basically all the action is in the blade and the weight, you can start it up a lot quicker on lighter line. Go out and try it. So go throw a chatterbait on 20 pound test, go throw it on 14 pound test and see which one it starts up faster on. Same concept with a blade bait, right? You wanna run lighter line, but you also wanna run lighter hardware in front of that bait. So this is the dual lock snap that I use. I know it's probably pretty difficult for you guys to see, but it's a size two dual lock snap and it's basically the cheapest dual lock. It's the cheapest snap that you can buy. And the reason I like that is because it's such light wire. It's very light wire as compared to some of the more expensive, heavier duty snaps. You don't need a heavy duty snap. You're running light line, you're running light drag, you're running all light gear, run a light snap, and that's going to allow that blade to work a lot faster and a lot cleaner. Along with that, I like to run really light split rings. These are size two split rings. My all time favorite split rings to run on a blade bait are the VMC black nickel split rings, which I'll have all this gear linked down in the description for you guys to go check out. But the VMC black nickel split rings size two are great. They're super light wire. Again, you have light gear, light tackle, and when you run those light split rings, you're gonna get more action out of your blade than if you run like a size three, or you run like a uh, hyper wire. The lighter gear that you can run on this blade, the more opportunity you have for this blade to act as it's supposed to, get a lot of action, create a lot of vibration, um, and draw a lot of big, big strikes. Now let's talk about the hooks that I'm throwing. And I'm gonna talk about some specialty hooks that I'm using or have been playing with, but the one that I've really developed a lot of confidence is in is the Hayabusa treble hook. This is the Hayabusa TBL 930, and it's the um, NRB coated one. It's a non-reflective black coating. If you guys fish the Gamagatsu uh, finesse nano coated hooks, it's that same coating on this hook. And uh, what I like about that, when the water gets cold, you wanna be able to penetrate that fish's mouth as easily as possible. And with that coating on the hook, gives you an advantage to uh, get some of those fish pinned when they might otherwise not with a standard treble hook. The other one that I've run forever and ever and I really love is the Owner Stinger treble hook. Both the Owner STX 36 and the Hayabusa TBL 930s in size number six. So that's the basics of the gear. Now we're gonna get into some modifications I actually do to the baits itself. Um, some ways that I fish the bait that might be a little bit different and some things that you guys might find that'll help you uh, catch a couple extra fish around other guys that might not be getting all the bites that you're getting. So the first thing I want to talk about is blade color and some things that I do with the blade to get a couple extra bites. And you guys are going to say, Ben, that's a weird looking bait. This is actually one that my buddy Nathan Durdowski, Dirty Dirds, colored up. But 
One thing that I've realized the importance of, especially recently, is having a target on the bait. So for a long time, I'd take a white blade, all white blade, and fish it. I'd take an all silver blade and go fish it. And what I noticed is fish are getting the back hook a lot. Fish are coming up behind that bait. They'd only get one hook or they'd get the front hook but not get it very good. When you add a target to the bait, it allows those fish to key in on something and say, okay, that front line, that's what I'm going to hit. That's the front of the bait. They come up and they eat it. Or those eyes, that's what I'm going to go eat. A lot of times fish eat things head first. So when you have a treble or when you have a target, um, it allows those fish to key in on something, go in for that bait, and eat it the direction that that target is. That's, that's where you want them to hit that bait. So one thing I've been doing with all of my baits, regardless of whether or not they have these crazy perch-like lines, I've been making sure they have eyes on them. Um, and my problem with the stick on eyes is that a lot of times they fall off and so you thereby lose your target. But those eyes create a target underwater. Now, do I think the red eyes matter? Not entirely. I think that basically turns to black underwater. But by having some sort of marking there, it gives those fish something to key in on, allows them to really focus on that one area of the blade bait and come up and, and hit it head first. So I'm taking Sharpies out there on the boat, black and red, um, and I'm creating targets on my bait. Even for a silver blade, if it doesn't have eyes or an eye gets knocked off, you can color a red eye in there or a black eye on there, but it gives those fish a target. A lot of you guys that fish around shad lakes, shad always have dots behind their, um, or by their fin, basically a third of the way up on the bait. You can draw a black dot on there. You can do a lot of things with a Sharpie. So give those fish a target, and this can apply to all hard baits. Give those fish a target, give them something to key in on, and a lot of times you're gonna notice that that's where your bite is coming. So if your target is at the front half of the bait, you're gonna notice they're gonna get the front treble hook a lot more. And when they get the front treble hook, a lot of times that back treble hook swings around and they get that as well. So by giving those fish a target has gotten me a couple extra bites and put a couple extra fish in the boat that maybe would otherwise only get the back hook and come off or basically just get the back hook and, and I'd run the risk of, of jumping them off. So by using a target on the bait is important. Now I'm gonna talk about something really sneaky that kind of Nathan figured out and that I worked on playing with um, and that is fishing a hair treble or a feathered treble or this little VMC hybrid spin blade treble and this is something that really shocked me and it might go back to that target idea it might go back to um, having something for those fish to key in on but using a feathered treble or that hybrid treble on the front hook doesn't really impact the action of the bait but it might draw a couple extra bites. Now I'm not saying it's gonna change the day for you, but when things get tough, uh, I would say you probably get a couple extra bites when you fish, you know, a feathered treble or a hybrid treble on the front. And this is something I only do when things get really tough or you're fishing around a bunch of fish and the bite shuts off, I'll put one of these hooks on uh, and maybe draw an extra bite or two. Now, what I really like is that they don't impact the action of the bait that much. This one with the blade on it impacts the action a little bit more because you have a little bit more resistance behind the bait. But that feathered treble pretty much acts just like a standard treble. Um, and one thing I would recommend is getting treble hooks that have very little feather on them. It's still going to breathe and move underwater, but by getting those really light tied trebles like this one, it's going to really breathe. Um, versus like those big feathered troubles that a lot of guys fish on the back of a, a jerk bait or something. These are ones that Nathan and I tie. Nathan admittedly is way better than I am at tying treble hooks, but um, Owner makes a really good light tied feathered treble. Uh, Berkeley Fusion makes a really good one and there, I'm sure there are other companies, but if you get one, make sure it's very lightly tied. You don't want it to impact the action of the blade. And now we're gonna get into the really nitty gritty section where I talk about how I'm fishing these baits that's a little bit different. Nathan's probably going to kill me for this, but this is something uh, I started doing and getting bites and he recognized pretty quick and it's going to trigger extra bites when the bite gets really tough or when other guys are around you fishing. This is going to trigger those extra bites. And the first one is dead sticking a blade bait. It sounds really dumb. It doesn't do anything. It's not like a soft plastic where you can leave it there and it's going to at least still have a little bit of movement dead stick a blade. If you know it's on a boulder, if you know a fish is on a boulder, you flip your bait out or you cast your bait out, you hit that boulder and you just set it there. You literally don't do anything. When I say you don't do anything, you just set it there and literally just hold your rod and wait for it to get heavy. You lift up, you feel if there's weight on it. You lift up, you feel if there's weight on it. All you're doing is taking that 
that blade that's laying sideways, turning it, turning it, turning it. And when you turn that bait, you're stirring up whatever's on the top of that boulder, whatever's on that, on that rock or whatever is on wherever you're fishing. You're making it look like this is dead or dying. So dead stick, and then to feel, you lift up. Dead stick, feel, you lift up. Especially if you know there's a fish there. That's one thing that Panoptics has changed for me. I can say, okay, I know there's a fish there, and dead stick with a lot more confidence. But um, if you know there's a fish on a certain piece of structure or cover, dead stick, lift up. Dead stick, lift up. Another thing that this kind of came over from lipless crankbait fishing in the spring was flipping a blade. So one thing Caleb, my buddy Caleb Bell does is he flips a lipless crankbait. Now a lipless, it's a little bit different because you have rattles, you have sound. So when you flip a lipless, when you take your rod and shake it and you flip that lipless, you make sound. You can do virtually the same thing without sound with a blade bait. Pretend you're dead sticked. All you do, you take your rod, you just shake the rod tip. When you shake that rod tip, it causes this bait to come up flip come up flip come up flip you don't want to feel it vibrate you literally just want to shake it almost like you're fishing a shaky head that's going to allow this bait to move but keep it in one spot what i've realized is fish are so keyed into their surroundings that you don't necessarily have to move a bait a long way to get them to realize something is there if you take this bait and it's down there and you're normally fishing it so it's lifting up going back down lifting up going back down you can get those fish to trigger by just flipping it back and forth you're making noise, you're moving it side to side. A fish can see a long ways, especially in the cold water where water clears up a lot faster. They can see this thing flipping back and forth. They can come over, key in on it, and get it. So shaking a blade or flipping a blade is another great way to fish it. And the final way to fish it, and this is where I might use um, this hybrid bladed treble a little bit more, is dragging a blade bait. So not like lifting and dropping, lifting and dropping. I'm talking like, like you would a jig. When bike gets tough offshore, you literally just turn your rod to the side and drag it. And with this, the, with this bladed treble, what you can do, when you drag it, this blade is going to spin down there. It might spin very slowly, but that's a technique that will work with the blade bait. That's something I've been doing, um, especially when I'm around more of those sand to rock transitions. When I know I'm on that sand, I'll just drag a blade through that sand. It's kicking up dirt. It's probably coming through sideways down there. It doesn't look that great, but those fish key in on it. They're like, okay, this thing is slowly moving along the bottom. Super easy meal. Let's go over key in on it and they tag it up and you catch one of the biggest fish of your life. So those are some of the secrets that I use when I'm fishing a blade. I hope I didn't overwhelm you guys, but if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below. And I hope this video was as good as most of you guys wished it would be. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you're not already, please hit that subscribe button down below. And as always, take care, tight lines. God bless. Pursue passion.